The process begins with this bucket of mealworms and waste plant matter. The decaying leaves feed the worms, the worms are fed to the fish, in turn the fish waste is used as nutrition to grow the plants. At first seedlings under ultraviolet light, eventually transplanted into the main growing operation. The system is inherently more sustainable than traditional farming because it doesn't require any additional fertilizer and uses 80 to 90 percent less water for similar yields, according to the hydroponic technician. So what we're doing is we're keeping a lot of the energy within our system. So the food is being, con the plant matter that would have been thrown away in some farms is now being reused for compost or for food. And that means that we're able to be more efficient and therefore we're actually able to help our environment. It's not going to waste. And that also means that we're more sustainable for ourselves and are able to actually take care of ourselves for a long run. One of the other important factors in ensuring healthy plants is ventilation. Not as easy with an indoor stacked system as it might be in a field outdoors. Summer student Lucy Herman has been conducting tests to understand the optimal amount of space in between plants for good air circulation and to keep them healthy. When they are growing too thick, there isn't enough space for air to properly get through in the same way as like, you know, when in your house air feels very stagnant so you open a window, it's the same thing in there. When that air is too stagnant, they start to wilt and they don't do as well and then they can't actually get the nutrients they need from the air. It also means that uh, mold and bacteria start forming because that air is stagnant, that bacteria isn't being moved. In addition to the educational value of the hydroponic setup, it also helps to grow food for the local community. Swiss chard, basil, a little sage and chives right now. Loren says they assist organizations like the Dream Kitchen, Food for Life and Food for Kids. Chef of the Dream Kitchen, Brandon Bousfield, gets to use some of the herbs in his program and describes the setup as the neatest thing to see. I have used their basil and I believe their thyme. Um, but yeah, I think it's a great idea. And I've been down a few times to see, I've taken the kids in to see it for a little tour. On a larger scale, it's hoped that the results of this experiment can help in other ways too, both around the world and right here at home. If you understand how you can mimic nature and understand how you can make these kinds of systems on a small scale, um, when it matters in places where you need to actually, like in emergency situations or in, in disaster stricken locations where you can't purchase these kinds of things, you can't purchase fish food right away, knowing how to actually produce the food that you need yourself for yourself is a lot better than having to rely on someone, someone else or something else that can go wrong. It's been great to have, you know, to be able to get my hands dirty and have a chance to make a real difference. It's very different from, you know, your traditional schooling where you have the idea but not the action. But here I get to implement a bit of both, which is great. Jason Trout for Halton News in Milton.